Do you like the size and power of a three row vehicle, but you don't need the third row? Then this Atlas Cross Sport is perfect for you. It's the two row version of the Volkswagen Atlas, just a little bit shrunken down. We're gonna take a full detailed look at everything and go for a test drive. I even put timestamps in the description below if you wanna skip around to different parts. Now I'm gonna start this off in the back seat. And I never do that, but the main reason for getting this Cross Sport is because there's a ton of rear seat leg room. It has more than the Tiguan and even more than the bigger Atlas. And that is what makes this special. And this is where the magic happens. I mean, it is seriously like sitting in a full size, uh, full size pickup with a crew cab back here. It is that spacious. The seats don't slide forward and backwards because they have a mechanism to where they actually tuck into the floor for cargo space. And I'll show you that in a little bit. And you can recline them a really nice amount. And you've got this panoramic glass up ahead. So overall, really nice place to be. You even have LED interior lighting. You've got AC vents with the storage cubby, a couple USB ports, and a three-prong outlet. Not to mention the door has above average cubby space as well. Volkswagen also gives you this folding armrest with some nice padding and some cup holders. The only complaint, this is a $45,000 vehicle and the back seat is a big perk for this type of vehicle but this upper portion is a hard touch plastic. So first of all, this cross sport is a little bit shorter and a little bit lower than the actual Atlas, but it is still a pretty large and very spacious vehicle. There are eight different trim levels, but we have the SEL V6, and I'll primarily talk about that starting right away on the front. You kind of have the same familiar Volkswagen sculpting up on that hood. You've got this three bar chrome grille and a little bit more of an aggressive bumper compared to some other Volkswagens. And even the R-Line trim will give you even more aggressiveness there. And these headlights, I really like the headlight design from Volkswagen here. These are, uh, you have LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, incandescent turn signal there. And then actually, right on the inside corner is the all-weather light. That acts as the fog light. And we even have the adaptive front lighting system and cornering light so the lights can move and illuminate next to you at night and they look really cool. They do a really nice job as well. One more design cue and aerodynamic feature is that little air curtain right there. Passes through over the wheel and we actually get 20 inch wheels on this model. You'll get 21 inch wheels on the R-Line and those are massive. And these are pretty big wheels as well. They really kind of fill out this wheel well because this Atlas Crossport has some pretty big haunches and kind of some pretty big fenders. And in this Aurora red metallic paint, I think it looks pretty good. This red paint is rich, it is deep, it looks good in the day and at night, and it suits some of the character lines on this crossboard. So on the side body, there's a little bit of a mixture. As you can see, you have a turn signal in the mirror. You have some chrome around those windows, but you do have some kind of some cladding, plastic cladding on the bottom and over the wheel wells. So it kind of has a, a unique, um, variation of trim pieces but I think it works well on this cross sport. Dimensionally it is 196 inches long, 2.8 inches less than the bigger three row Atlas and this gives us eight inches of ground clearance but this is also quite a bit longer than the Tiguan which is the other two slash three row vehicle. And as we come around to the back this is where things change a little bit. You get a more aggressive design back here. It's a really steeply raked uh, rear glass. You have Volkswagen's signature LED taillights as well. Those also look pretty cool. It's a really unique design. Same with that blinker. And then you kind of have an aggressive bumper back here as well. And we can even tow 5,000 pounds with that hitch. The Atlas Crossboard also brings you a couple of new driver assist features. So aside from all the standard driver assist tech, you get traffic jam assist, which will use the lane keeping system and adaptive cruise control at speeds from zero to 37 miles an hour to basically keep you moving smoothly in stop and go traffic all the way down to a stop and accelerate. It can also come with dynamic road sign display, which will show you your speed. It'll show you street signs like no passing zones, even work zones and school zones. Now, as we take a look at the cargo area, first of all, on these Middle and upper trims, you get the hands-free lift gate. So that is convenient. And you get a lot of space back here. You get about 40 cubic feet behind that second row. And it's really flat, as you can see. You also have a light on each side. You can pull this out on each side for a hook or for a net. Got a 12 volt power outlet back there. 
a little cubby down there and on the other side. And then if we lift this up, you get a spare tire under here and your jack kit and even maybe a little extra space if you want to throw some jumper cables or things like that. In order to fold those down, you do have to go to the second row. It would be nice to have a lever back there because it is quite a reach and because you actually have to go here instead of like a tab up here. But when you fold this down, the seat bottom actually moves. So that is super flat. And then you get about 77 cubic feet, lots of space. It's really flat. It's really low, really wide open as well. Probably the best part about this cargo area. Volkswagen gives you the smart key system. You can see it's very familiar with other Volkswagens. You can open up your hatch. You can remote start the vehicle as well. It is really nice and slim, so very easy to fit into your pocket. And the way Volkswagens works is with a sensor in the back to open it, or you can just press on that little line and it's locked. If you have mobility issues, getting into the front seat is really easy. It's a really easy ride height to just basically just slide right in. And in our model, we have this dark beige leatherette seat with 10-way power adjustment, including two-way lumbar support. They even have some perforations on them. They look really nice. The seats are also heated with memory settings. The passenger seat also has eight-way power adjustment, including height adjustment. It just doesn't have the adjustable lumbar support. And if you want to get ventilated seats, you can get those on the upper trims from here. And overall, I've been really comfortable in here. All of the recent Volkswagen seats, I've had no complaints, been comfortable uh, pretty much all the time I've been driving. I like the adjustments, the headrest isn't too aggressive. I have good headroom at five foot nine, and I don't even have the seat all the way down. One thing about this Cross Sport, kind of being a mix of the Atlas, but bigger than the Tiguan, is there's still a lot of space in here. So very roomy cabin overall. Steering wheel is leather wrapped and it's actually revised, which I will show you in a little bit. It's got a nice generous range of motion for tilt and telescoping. As you take a look at the interior, it is a very practical, typical Volkswagen interior, but it is definitely not modern. I was hoping for a little more modern spice than what we have, but it is very solidly built. Now, when you take a look at the door, if you rest your arm up here, this is a softer material. You kind of have a unique trim piece running across. I like this stitching in this kind of this gray beige like our seats and then you've got a nice wide and padded armrest good solid grab handle all four windows are what are one touch automatic and then you've got a really nice generous storage area you can pop your tailgate with that and good size bottle holder right to the inside you also have this little storage bin right there and then in order to turn on your fog lights all weather lights you just pull on that push button start it's right there And Volkswagen actually somewhat revised the steering wheel. It feels a little bit bulkier, but it still has kind of the same design style, I guess you could say. I like the grips. It's very comfortable to hold on to, leather wrapped, and slightly revised buttons right here as well on the steering wheel. Now, even though the wiper stock doesn't say it, you do have rain sensing windshield wipers in here. And then right in front of us, we get Volkswagen's digital cockpit. You can see you have the temperature gauge on the left and then your fuel gauge on the right, and then it's all digital in the middle. So if you've never seen Volkswagen's digital cockpit, it is pretty cool. You can see a lot of different information. You can change the layout of the view so you can still have your tachometer and speedometer. Uh, you can have it be separated like that or the way that we first had it. There are several pages that you can scroll through like to see your driver assist, like your adaptive cruise, lane keeping system. You can see your navigation on here. And if you change the view, you can see the entire screen of navigation. So that's kind of cool. So much different, so many different things that you can do. Um, you can also see a lot of different trip computer information. And as I scroll through this, you can see everything that's available for you to see. So pretty cool area right here from Volkswagen. Now, like I mentioned, it's not the most modern interior, but you do have soft material up here. And I'm really a fan of this extra storage cubby. It is kind of a rubber liner, so things don't slide around. It's just an extra little area to throw sunglasses, wallet, whatever you might have. And then we have the eight inch screen right here. This is where I was maybe expecting some changes kind of with this center console, center stack area, but it is still functional. It works well, and it's just like other Volkswagens. So on the screen, you do have um, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. And I like how when you bring your hand close, it'll automatically pop up different buttons. Um, 
there's a lot of useful information you can customize and and change different settings through here it's a very responsive touch screen as well so no complaints with that now we do have navigation and sirius xm uh, but we do not have the fender premium audio system so if you want that you have to move up in trim levels and then if i put it in reverse we kind of just have the standard backup camera you do get dynamic lines just with this one view if you want the top down overhead view camera you got to move up in trim levels and as you move down you'll find your ac controls your heated seat buttons and we do have dual zone ac for you and your passenger you can sync it up so they have the same temperature auto stop start button is tucked away right there and then down here you get a really large generous storage area with a couple usb charging ports auxiliary port and a 12 volt power outlet and this mat is actually a wireless charging bin so if you want to use it as a charging mat you can otherwise it's a rubber storage mat the shifter from volkswagen has a really nice solid feel you can pull back all the way to go into sport mode go back to drive or move over if you want to manually shift with your shifter You'll find your start stop button right there for push button start electronic parking brake so with the drive mode button you have a couple different options you can have normal you can have snow you have off road and then you even have a custom off road and then you also have the eco normal sport and then still another custom mode and if you go to the custom mode you can actually customize all of this stuff like even the adaptive lighting system how aggressive the climate control is your adaptive cruise control even the weight of the steering wheel and responsiveness so I like that you have that flexibility from Volkswagen. The cup holders are really large. They accommodate basically everything. And then one thing that really separates this from other two row vehicles is just how wide this armrest is. So like with the Tiguan, you're not gonna have it nearly as wide and you lift it up. You got a really massive storage area with another USB charging port. My only complaint is that where I'm sitting, the armrest seems to be just a little bit low but still, it is comfortable and it is softly padded. Volkswagen also gives you this little netted area, just a convenient little storage area for your passengers. Up above, you get an automatic dimming rear view mirror. Up here, we get LED interior lighting as well. And we also have the panoramic roof on our trim. And that does go quite a ways back with the shade that comes over here. It is a large roof and it goes way back there. Now in terms of visibility, the front pillars are about average size. You do got blind spot indicators in there. Like I said, we also have parking sensors. B pillar is not bad. That back window is a pretty good size to see out of, but then things get tight back there with the really steeply sloped rear end, kind of a crammed rear window. So visibility is not the best, but I've had no trouble seeing with my mirrors and looking over my shoulder. Now under the hood, even though this isn't as big or you're not gonna be carrying around as many people as the Atlas, you still get the same powerful engine options. So in our particular model, we have the direct injected 3.6 liter VR6 with 276 horsepower, 266 pound-feet of torque. Some of the models, you can also get a two liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. Personally, I would go for this V6. It's very refined, it's got more power, more torque, both of them pair well with the eight-speed automatic transmission. By far, the biggest downside to the Atlas Cross Sport is its efficiency. So this one, with the four motion all-wheel drive, gets 16 city, 22 highway. That's like Ford Expedition numbers. So that's a bummer. However, I have gotten better than that just in my regular driving, and you probably will too. This V6 though, if you're gonna be hauling stuff around, you can tow up to 5,000 pounds. All right, we are just getting going in the Atlas Cross Sport, and I'm going to tell you what it's like to drive this every day. Ride comfort, how it handles, some of the acceleration, and maybe even some of how it compares to the Tiguan and the Atlas as well, because I've been in those not too long ago. It's actually been a little while since I've been in the Atlas, but I have been in the Tiguan recently. So my first impression of the Atlas Cross Sport is that it's a really easy vehicle to drive around. It's, it's got a comfortable nature. It feels very similar to the Tiguan, but you can definitely tell it's bigger and more substantial. Let's go ahead and get on it. And you got a powerful V6. It is not as powerful as some other V6s in class or in vehicles of this size, but it's more, it's, it's enough because it's not like you're going to have three rows of people in here. 
Um, but it would be nice to see either a little more power or better efficiency. But overall, ride comfort in here is very good. I've been happy with it. Um, that is one big plus to this crossboard is that it's comfortable. You still have a longer wheelbase like the Atlas, but with two rows. The long wheelbase helps to balance out bumps in the road. And another thing is the handling. So this rides and handles quite well for a vehicle of this size. It feels very well planted to the road. The weight of the steering is great. It's also responsive. There's not a lot of body lean. The ride and handling in here is just probably one of my favorite things. It's just, it, it does really well, uh, better than I expected. And the Tiguan drove really well too. Compared to the Atlas, I feel like it's a more dialed in steering. I, it could, could just be my imagination, but I really like the way that this drives. Now I just put it in sport mode to get around this corner. And I know most of you aren't gonna corner hard or anything, but it's nice to know you have a nice driving vehicle. holds the RPMs in sport mode so it's ready to go yeah it's definitely responsive this 8-speed transmission I'm gonna put it back in normal mode this 8-speed transmission paired with this V6 has done a nice job there have only been a couple of times where it felt maybe a little bit a little bit jerky but for the most part it's been very smooth now in terms of road noise this side glass is not laminated it is a little bit thicker um, road noise overall is pretty good. It's not exceptional, but it's not bad either. It's kind of middle of the class. It does, it does well. It's not obnoxious. You can carry on a conversation in here. Uh, even on rougher textured roads, it's not too bad. Now one thing with that bump that we just hit is that with these 20 inch wheels, these are pretty good sized wheels. So you do feel a little bit more of the bumps, probably in comparison to smaller wheels. But like I said, ride comfort is still good. It still does a nice job. I have not experienced any rattles or vibration or anything like that. Um, the lane keeping system and radar cruise control have done a good job as well. And some of you may be curious about you know, the visibility like I showed you, but I haven't had any issues being able to see cars around me. Ergonomics wise, I wish that there were maybe a little more physical buttons, but the actual touch buttons on the screen are easy to reach. The visibility here is good. I like the storage areas in here, especially that one up there. And room is excellent here. That is one big thing about this compared to other two row only vehicles is this is very spacious. Now, if you're debating between the turbo or the V6, one difference is that with the turbo, if you just put your pedal down a little bit, it's gonna go pretty quickly right away. Whereas V6, you have to kind of rev it out, get more RPMs, a little more pedal to get the power. But once you do get some power from this V6, this is definitely more powerful than the turbo four cylinder. Now the brakes on here, they feel pretty good as well. They're responsive, about average, no complaints with that. And in terms of driving this every day, I can definitely see the appeal that Volkswagen is targeting with some customers. A lot of people can get three row vehicles that don't actually need or use the third row. They just want the space. And that's what you have here. This is larger than other regular two row vehicles like, for example, maybe the Chevy Blazer, the Ford Edge, Nissan Murano, vehicles like that. This is dimensionally bigger. It has unique style, tons of legroom, and still really good cargo space. Now let's go ahead and wrap things up. Now to wrap things up on this 2020 Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport, I like the angle that Volkswagen's coming at here. So it's still almost just like the rest of the Volkswagens. There's nothing revolutionary on the inside, except now it's a two row version with a lot of space. So if you've considered the Volkswagen Atlas or the Tiguan, this is a perfect fit in the middle, but definitely closer to the Atlas. It's got the same power as the Atlas. It's got more leg room than the Atlas, still a lot of cargo space and a lot of overall passenger space. The only downside is that this is priced just like other three row vehicles and it is getting expensive at $45,000 for this model. But let me know what you think down below. Be sure to watch some of these other videos and subscribe for weekly reviews. Have a great rest of your day.